stick. And I'm gonna show you three lengths of stick. I like this. This is the Kali stick, also known as Arnis martial arts or a scream of martial arts. It's a simple length of a stick, and I like to train with it, one or two, one in each hand, because you can find sticks just about anywhere, and this represents the length of a lot of umbrellas. So this is a very effective, basic fighting stick length. So this is the Kali stick. I also wanna talk about defending yourself with the stick using something this size, which represents 36 inches, this is the length of most everyday walking sticks. It's also known as the Japanese Hanbo. This comes from the Filipino martial arts. This comes from the Japanese martial arts. And then a walking stick or a hiking staff, something that's a little bit longer. You can see it comes up to about my armpit. This one's 54 inches. This is made out of hickory. It's very strong. So learning how to fight with the stick to stop a violent assault using a stick, you can have any length. Now, you don't have to have the perfect length either, and this is the point. I've been seeing, the, I know you've been seeing them too, a lot more violent assaults in the news these days. There's a horrific one in New York in an ATM enclosure where a man was using the ATM and a deranged man came up with the machete and just hacked this guy, and he's standing there using his hands, backing up, which is the first big mistake. If somebody has a stick or a knife, any kind of weapon, and they're swinging at you, don't back up. Backing up allows them to go through their full range and create the most damage. So I'm gonna show you how to close the distance. And if you have a stick for self-defense, you're gonna be even more effective. I wanna show you first my favorite technique using this length of a stick, this Kali length stick. Someone pulls out a knife, a machete, any other kind of weapon, you put the other hand on it, you have two hands, you're able to block yourself using this, and this doesn't bleed. In the picture, uh, the, the video of the man who is getting attacked by the violent, crazy, deranged man using that machete. Of course, he was trying to block with his hands and he gets all cut up, lacerated, horrible, horrible injuries. So thank God he survived. But you're not going to block with your hands if you can block with a stick instead. And I don't even want you to block. I want you to blast. This is the first concept. First basic idea of fighting with a stick is that you're going to strike them first. You see a knife, you see a machete, instead of trying to time it, and your hands could get cut, right? And the finger could come off. Instead of trying to block that, and you can, you can block, but instead I want you to blast. And the first is gonna be the most basic, which is just straight in. If they have something swinging at you, that means they have to lift their arm. Most people will not know how to use it, just like the man with the, in the ATM enclosure, and he's hacking the other guy up, innocent man who's just trying to go about his life unharmed this crazy man who probably should be in jail but isn't for who knows why is chopping him up and he's swinging with these big wide actions big wide arcs right so if you step in closing the distance and you stick this hard piece of hickory right into his nose his mouth his eyes and this can be an umbrella this could be a walking stick this could be your walking cane if you start to feel uncomfortable and you can carry something with you that you can use to defend yourself, a simple self-defense tool that is based on the concept of a stick, you're gonna be able to put both hands on it and shove it straight through his face or through his throat or into his body. As you close that distance, you take away his biggest asset with that machete or that knife and that's his ability to swing it and lacerate and create all of that power. Now, that also puts you in danger of being stabbed with it, especially if it's a knife, but you're gonna be striking, blasting him in the face, in the throat, and you're not gonna do one and done. You're gonna hit one, two, as many times as you can until you knock him as far away as you can so he cannot reach you with that weapon, with that knife, with his fists. Maybe it's a stronger opponent. Maybe it's multiple attackers. Blasting is number one. Think of doing push-ups your hands on the stick. On this bag, you can see that I create so much force pushing through the target and the target that you can remove or destroy. His ability to see you temporarily or permanently, his ability to breathe uh, temporarily, his teeth come right out of his throat or permanently through the, th the, the neck right here. So striking that with full force. The second thing, and this is also closing the distance, Remember, you can block if you had to. If he's swinging down here, instead of trying to time it, 
I want you to blast them with it. Instead of blocking, blast. So the second one, both hands on it still, is going to be that jabbing motion. Now this is something that law enforcement has used for over 100 years. Military have used this technique and they use it because it's simple, it's effective. Anybody can be taught this in a short five minutes. I can give you a five minute class, tell you how to put both hands on it and step in and stick the tip of your stick into the solar plexus or into that thin uh, muscle between the belly button and the, the private parts or up into the throat. You can take this up higher and go into the jaw or the, the, the chin, the nose, the eyes. You can, come up, you can come down, you can go even lower and it's as simple as pointing this right through the center of the body. This also, if you're older, you have arthritic hands, this is one of the best ways that you can hold it for self-defense. Pushing in here. If you're older, you have arthritic hands, instead of trying to block in time, a younger, faster, more aggressive, crazy, adrenaline, uh, drug-pushed uh, person, put somebody who's, who's hyped or hopped up on drugs, hyped up on coffee, someone like me, right? Too much coffee. But they're coming in and they're just full of that crazy energy, you don't want to be in there trying to parry and block and, and sword fight them. You want to just blast them through the face or take this and stick it in. From here, I can come in here. I can, I can use either side of it. If they're to the side of you and you catch them, they're getting ready to strike you in the head. Instead of blocking up this way, stick this here. And all of a sudden, this becomes this as they fall. And then, like I said at the beginning, it's not one and done. When you are defending yourself using a stick against a violent assault, using a stick for self-defense, it's multiple strikes. The fight's not over until you win, the self-defense fight. So you can start with this blast. You can do a few down here, maybe bring that up and into the face. And then you can take the length of it and swing, but the swings for self-defense are gonna come after you do these opening, create distance between you and the threat moves. Now, if you have a lot of distance, you can put the stick between you and the threat. If he's that far back, if they blindside you or they close that distance, you'd be shocked at how fast they come in. They get in really quick and you need to respond so that you don't get struck or get lacerated. And maybe you get hit once or twice, but not 38 times. What you have to do is just go for that first pushing motion or a thrusting motion. And again, think about what targets can you remove or destroy, and you don't have a lot of time to think, so don't overthink it. The center of the body, right here, that's always gonna be your most effective area to strike because of the eyes, the nose, the mouth against hickory are gonna lose. That's all gonna lose when you shove that in with two hands. And again, if you're, if this is senior self-defense, if you've been looking for senior self-defense and this becomes an option because you think, well, yeah, I could carry an umbrella, especially some of, the, some of the umbrellas, you can buy a little bit nicer umbrella. They sell self-defense umbrellas, but I haven't been impressed. I wouldn't invest my money in them. But if you buy a basic strong, like a, the weatherman umbrella, a really strong umbrella, now you have an option, you know, and it, and it might get broken during, or a guy, Slash, slashed up against the machete, but better the, the $100 umbrella than any part of your body, right? Better than losing a finger or having this opened up or have them slice this up or the permanent scar on your face if you even do survive. So finding a way to fight with the stick, an improvised self-defense tool against a violent assault, especially somebody who has a knife or a bigger opponent or multiple attackers. So this is the first thing. After you push, after you hit this one, then you can slice through and think about striking the temple or the jaw or the neck or one of the joints. And now we're on the outside of the body. We're not in the center. If you were in a position where you could step back and there's some distance between you and them and you can give a verbal command and say, back up, don't come any closer, then you could thrust. And that thrust could go into the face, go into the teeth, go into the throat. And then after that, you can add those slashing strikes. If you're not as strong and you're not as fast, 
get that other hand on it and go for blast, go for jab. Don't block blast. That's, I, I, I've been thinking about that. It's been ruminating in my brain, right? This idea, because people keep asking me, please teach more blocks, please teach more blocks. And they say, yes, I will. And I don't want you to block, right? If you instinctively block, if your hands are up and you, you flinch block and you get back into position, that's great. I do want you to do that. But I don't want you to practice blocking in traditional ways so that you can get into a back and forth, back and forth fight. It's not about a fight. It's about ending the fight. It's about immediate, direct, explosive. Immediately, straight in, using this, coming in, and um, destroy, destroying things. Skylar asked, do I know about the Serata Escrima? Yes, it is more like Escrima, Arnis, Kali. That's the stick. Now let's go to a little bit longer stick and knock them down back here. This is a walking stick. I'm gonna lower the camera because you won't be able to see it. And I, again, I wanna show you some things that work best. Senior self-defense especially. If you have arthritic hands, you're not gonna be able to do all of the things that you might learn in a traditional martial arts based thing. I wanna teach you practical self-defense, self-defense that works and self-defense that works with the walking stick. And this could be any nice walking stick. I showed this last week with the, uh, the Irish walking stick, the shillelagh, also an Irish fighting stick. But your hand is simply going to go down the front. And I always picture, because I, I remember this from that TV series, the old TV series with Walking Tall. The guy's walking, he's standing there with a stick. As soon as he knows he has to defend himself, he just simply puts his hand down. Now you're in this position where you're holding the stick for self-defense. The other hand comes on it, just like you're doing push-ups. And again, instead of blocking, we're gonna blast. Now you just, the only difference between this and the collar stick or the Escrima stick, the Arnis stick, whatever you wanna call it, and I put the links below if you wanna see a little bit more about this, uh, the uh, walking stick as a self-defense, or if you wanna look at that collie stick. I put a link below, check those out if you want to. From here, the only difference is I have more stick to use. He has a machete. Again, if he's swinging that machete at you, instinctively, you're going to want to back up. But you have to fight that. That's why you have to practice. Practice means preparation. Prepare. Don't panic. When you panic, you'll move back, and he'll just he'll fillet your body, right? He'll just take all of take your fingers right off your hands as you're trying to block. You, this is instinctive. People, that means that's what your body naturally wants to do is to recoil and with a bladed weapon, especially when they're slashing at you, it's the worst thing you can possibly do. They're swinging a baseball bat at your head. They're swinging a tire iron at your body. The worst thing you can do is back up. And that's because that gives them full range of motion that increases the whole way down. It's getting harder and harder, striking faster and faster. And then when they hit, they're gonna do a lot of damage. If instead you've trained, practice with me, and then you go in, then you will immediately close the distance and use that hard piece of oak. In this case, it's oak going through the teeth, into the nose, into the eyes, into the throat. That's why this is such a great option for senior self-defense or women's self-defense against a bigger opponent. Is If they're stronger, bigger, faster, and you're trying to go hand-to-hand -hand boxing or grappling or Krav maga or whatever, it's not going to work for you. It's going to be very difficult because they're physically stronger. That's just a reality. And then if they're all hopped up on drugs or craziness, that even makes it worse for you. But if you let the wood do the work, the wood it doesn't bleed and it has no feelings, no emotion, but it can go in through the teeth and take the teeth right out of their mouth. The wood with a little bit of help, help and effort from your body. So that's why we leverage. We use stick for self-defense. How does it uh, stop an assault from a bigger a violent attacker, multiple attacker, somebody with a knife or machete, like we saw in that video. It's been in the news a lot lately in New York City. The guy's trying to go to the ATM, the crazy guy's in there waiting for him, and he just starts hacking at this guy, and you see it, you see what's instinctive. He, he's, he's, he's trying to, he's reaching, he's trying to stop, and the whole time he's backing up, and the guy's just doing more and more damage. And it's, criticism is not for the victim, of course, the attacker is 100% at fault. But if the victim knew how to close that gap, and if better yet, there's some self-defense tool, either a walking cane or a walking stick or a hiking stick, or maybe instead of that collie stick, he's carrying an umbrella. He can stick that umbrella through the guy's throat, through his face.
And as that guy comes forward to slash and that hits his face, his body recoils because he can't stop. His face can't be like so strong. You know, his nose, he can't do push-ups with his nose and make it tough. He can't do push-ups with his teeth. His teeth are gonna come out of his mouth. His, his nose is gonna smash. Blood comes out, his eyes will water. It'll ring his brain, maybe knock him out. If you get to knock him out, turn off his operating system. If he's got a weapon, you automatically win. That's great. You won't have to worry about the next strike he's gonna do because he's unconscious on the ground. Or maybe you stick that through the throat. God forbid the guy who's trying to hack you to death with his machete asphyxiates and dies because you sho for self-defense. You shove that through his throat, right? First thing is that blast. Second thing, there it is. All of the force and uh, energy in your body and watch what I'm doing with my body. I'm turning my shoulders and my hips. I'm not doing this with my arms. That's not strong enough. This is extremely strong. And I, and again, senior self-defense, self-defense against a bigger opponent. If you're not as strong, your hands aren't as strong, maybe they're arthritic, you've got some pain. The last thing you wanna do is this because that forces it all into your hands. But if you get a good grip, it's by your waist, you turn and you can come in. You can turn, angle up a little bit. All you're doing is lifting the front end and sticking it into his throat or into his mouth, into his face for self-defense. And then of course, there we go. I just took out his leg. I moved him back. I sent him on his heels. I broke his knee. Fight over, you win. That's what we want for self-defense. We don't want to prolong. You're not gonna get up there and sword fight him. Although you can use the techniques from sword fighting. I'm not trying to make it a, um, like Zoro. I used to love the Zoro shows. And you know, he would fight and they'd go up and down and or in uh, Princess Bride and the guys, they're fighting all over the mountainside and they're, they're fighting and they're jumping up and down and that's not what you want. You wanna stick this into his eyes and his mouth and his nose, stick this part into his solar plexus so that he's puking up his own blood because he can't catch his breath and maybe break that cartilage a little bit and or stick it into his throat, let the cops come and take care of it. And then the video camera's there, the same video camera that caught that man being hacked up mercilessly by the crazy guy could have instead caught the man pulling, taking his machete, going for that first swing. And the other man, because he's practiced, he's trained, <laughs> stick something right in his face. Maybe he had his, he has walking cane with him. So from here, simply put it down, bring it to the other hand, you're ready to defend yourself. Blast them, and again, your whole body turns. If you take a step with that front foot, coming in, coming in, shoulders and hips, right? And then a little bit with the hand for extra measure, just to aim it or come up into his face. See how my arms go straight? That's a very strong position for you. If you learn how to do this motion, and you can practice that, stepping in over and over. And then finally, these slashing, these come toward the end, straight down on top of his head, coming through into his neck, coming into his arm, coming in, breaking that wrist that's holding the machete or the knife or whatever. And then finally, same thing, but longer, the walking stick, the hiking stick, this a little bit here. Yeah, keep it simple. Thank you, Peter. From here, I like this first opening motion because I can thrust. If you're closing the gap and I have to have, happen to have my walking stick, and it's not so far-fetched. I've seen in the last week, people probably getting ready to go to Europe because it's opened back up for a short period of time. And then they're gonna go for some hikes, maybe not in Greece, because the state and country's on fire. They kicked everybody out, but maybe they open it back up. And now all of a sudden you're hiking the hills, and, uh, you're in Germany, you're in Italy, you're in Sweden, and you have a hiking stick. A walking stick that's not too far-fetched but you have this uh, pole and I see them around here people practice for that right and they walk or it's just your choice good morning Shannon good morning Matthew it's good to see everybody Peter from here striking simply straight in and then pointing the thumb getting it in the back hand you have that basic thrusting motion from here with the split grip you have that pushing motion blast thrust and slashing motion, coming down at an angle on top of the head, through the jaw, through the neck. My hands didn't change position. Practice these basic motions, lift them up off the ground, and 
against the machete. Again, always go into the attack, never come back. Now let's say he's got a stick and you have nothing. He has a machete and you have nothing. He has a knife, you have nothing. The thing that you have to do is you have to enter, you have to close the gap, right? Backing up and recoiling, you're just gonna get sliced up. You're probably gonna get cut. You're probably gonna get cut, so we're gonna get past that. There's no, there's no Krav Maga martial arts kung fu in the world that's gonna keep you from getting cut. It's unfortunate, but there you are, there he is. I'd rather you live and take him out for self-defense. Take him out so he can't hurt anybody else, right? From here, enter and use your most powerful weapon, right? Your most powerful weapon, and I know we're all gonna say it's the brain and all that stuff, but I'm talking about more practically than that, your elbow. Think about your hands closing and covering the backside of your arms, covering your head and your body. Let them slice this and not this side, right? All of the vital spots that go through there, you'll bleed out. Um, you won't be able to use your hand because they'll cut all those tendons. So put it in here. You don't have a weapon. He has a stick. He has a knife. He has a skateboard, or there are a couple of them. You're going to enter. As you come in, drive with that elbow into the body. You're moving your feet to close the distance. And again, if you don't practice this, you will not do it. You'll naturally go like this. I will. Anybody will. Because... That's our instinctive motion, to recoil and cover. And see what I did? You saw it in the video with the man in the machete in New York in the ATM enclosure, and he's going like this, and he's trying to catch the machete. He's trying to catch the hand, trying to stop the guy. And his hands are out. All of his important spots are getting sliced up. His body's getting sliced up. If instead you turn your hands and you cover here, and see how this is leading? This is in front of my body. I just let that walk itself into the opponent. Walk it into the violent assault. You have to stop an assault. Stop a violent assault with a stick or without a stick. Stop a violent assault. He has a stick. He has a knife. He has a weapon. Your hands here. Try. Once you enter and you've made contact with his body, you've taken away his ability to do this. But if he's got that knife, he might start sticking it in you. And it's going to happen really fast. So you're not going to stay here. You're not going to do one and done. It's not one strike and over, one strike and over. There's no such thing. Sniper rifle, yes. With this, no. It's the next elbow. And when you go for, for here, you can come here. You can come up here. If you enter here and you hit him here, you maybe you take out his wind a little bit, create a little distance, drive that other one up under his chin. Hopefully you hit so much force, it breaks the teeth in his mouth. His jaw goes into three pieces and his brain lights out, hopefully, for self-defense. Between you and him, I want you to go home and be safe. From here, drive. Drive them up, drive them in, and if you need more strength, grab your own hand. From here, start to drive. Right into his face. Anytime you take your own hand, you're much, much stronger. You create leverage, and you're leveraging your power, but you're here to protect He's swinging that stuff at you. Let him hit this if you have to, if you have another choice. Better this than this. Better in than out. From here, try. Take this in. Lower yourself. Get under there. And stick that elbow into his body. Not once, not twice, but as many times as it takes. The fight's not over till you win. You guys have been awesome. Please thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so. I'll be back in a little bit.